Okay. Let's see how this goes. I have had people tell me before, some very lovely people obviously, that they would be happy to listen to me read from the phone book. They like hearing me talk. They like the way I speak. Which is nice. That's probably the highest compliment I could be paid because the way I talk and the way I present myself and my use of language is very important to me. Of course, I would never actually read from the telephone book. Do you know what I really hate is when you're trying to roll a smoke and you get the little insert that says, you know, you've only got ten papers left or you've only got five papers left. The little impending sense of doom that you get is so uncomfortable. Of course, I suppose it's better to have it than not because imagine not being warned that you've only got five papers left and then thinking, I would like six cigarettes and you've only got five papers. That would suck. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to set up the camera like I have and I'm going to ramble a bit and we'll see where we end up. I started rolling my own cigarettes at home a couple of years ago to save money because cigarettes are criminally expensive in Australia. They really are. Whenever a friend of mine comes back from overseas, smoker or non-smoker, the first thing they tell me because they know I smoke is, oh, the smokes were so cheap, they were five dollars a packet and I just... I just want to punch them, because that's not welcome news, is it? Oh, this thing you do, it's cheaper elsewhere. Yeah, thanks. Where is my lighter? Where is that bastard thing? You're starting to hoard again. You're starting to hoard your stuff. This is bad, Vicky. This is bad. I hear this. There's a funny story behind this lighter. Mm. I love zippos, don't you? This little zippo has the sex pistols on it. I don't know if you can see that. I bought this at a service station in Wollongong. A service station that is generally acknowledged to be the most expensive in the region. And I don't know why they're so expensive, but they just are. And I went in one night at four in the morning. And I had been awake all night writing and reading and watching YouTube and stuff like that. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull an all-nighter, so I'm gonna stay up for another couple of hours. So I'll get a Red Bull. So I drove to this servo, because I knew it would be open, and got a Red Bull. And there was a little sort of rotating display of Zippos. So I bought this one, because I like the design. And I quite like the Sex Pistols. I'm watching my laptop right now, because I'm importing the movie that I just finished making. The 19 Questions video that I just did, that Susan inspired me to do. I love Susan. She's boss. I love down-to-earth people. Down-to-earth people are the best. I know it's kind of unusual for a drag queen to say that they like down-to-earth people because drag queens are, are big and larger than life and all of that shit, but I'd really... My problem is I've met too many people that are larger than life and crazy and maverick to the point where it's so obviously an act, but you can't act down to earth and get away with it, I don't think. If you're, if you're down to earth, you're down to earth and there's no faking it. And with someone like Susan or Daisy Nation or Lana Indiana or all of, all of these fabulous women that I follow on YouTube, there's, you, can't, you can't fake that kind of sincerity. You just, if you can, you you know, Meryl Streep. My mother drinks a lot of coffee per day, a lot of, you know, five or six cups of coffee a day, which if you ask her is not immoderate. But, uh, if, yeah, if she doesn't drink coffee, she will get a headache. Uh, and that has recently happened to me because I thought, oh, I'm drinking, I'm drinking, my nose is itchy. I haven't, don't lie, Victoria, you've done coke. No, I haven't done coke, my nose is just itchy. I might be allergic to something. That'd be a bitch. I thought, you're spending too much money on Red Bull and it's not good for your health, so just go cold turkey. So I did, I went two days without drinking Red Bull and I got the worst headache of my life because I suffered this massive caffeine withdrawal and had to <laughs> had to start drinking it again, basically, to get rid of the headache. In an average day, I'll probably have at least four cans of Red Bull. The medium, small to medium sized ones, at least four of those. I know you're only supposed to have two, but two for me is the minimum. If I don't have two, I can't get out of bed. I have two before lunch. That's something that's really shitting me too. There's this campaign going on in Australia right now featuring some of Australia's most obnoxious television personalities about quit smoking month or quit smoking week or whatever it is, I never pay attention. It's all about um, support... the fuck was that? It's all about supporting your smoking friends in their quit journey. So, you know, if you quit smoking, friend of mine, I'm gonna give up cake or I'm gonna give up chocolate. These, these are actual examples of things that people are saying on the television commercials. Like, seriously? If, if I give up the ciggies, you're not going to eat cake.
get stuffed. There is no comparison. I'm sorry, this is a drug. This is something I am legitimately addicted to. This is nicotine. Sweet lady nicotine. And you're going to tell me you're not going to have carrot cake or you're not going to have Cadbury's. Piss off. That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. It's, it's not Lent. It's not, it's, you know, it's not piss weak excuse to give something up for a little while that you can very easily live without. I can't live without cigarettes. If I don't smoke for long enough, then I get shitty and start lashing out at people. And, you know, one day I quit. I'm, I'm sure I will one day quit. But right now I'm just... I'm having too much fun being a smoker. That said, if anyone said to me, Victoria, should I start smoking? I would say no, because it is a bad habit and it is killing me. But quite frankly, so is everything else I enjoy. So <laughs> why not slide into the grave? I find myself wondering how long this video is going to be. I could very easily edit it together and make it an hour long, couldn't I? It could be, you know, huge. I wonder how many people would watch it if it was an hour long. I wonder how many people are watching it still. Never had one lesson, can you believe that? When I was little, the first thing I ever wanted to be was a veterinarian, because my cousin wanted to be a veterinarian, and I quite idolised her, even though she was my younger cousin. So anything she was into, I, I was automatically into, because I wanted to be just like Amy. So when she told me, and I think we were five or six, that she really wanted to work with animals, horses in particular, I said, oh yeah, me too. I'm no good with animals at all, except cats. I like cats and dogs. More so cats. I'm not very good at poetry, but I like, I kind of like poetry. I kind of like that you can express something in that way. If you, if you tried to express that in a story, you'd have to be more verbose and sort of fill in the gaps. Poetry sometimes, or the, the type of poetry that I like, sort of feels like you just take out all of the unnecessary bits of a story and just break it down to the concepts and go with that. So, yeah, I do like poetry. I used to hate poetry. I always thought poetry was wank, but now I quite like it, actually. Poetry's pretty good. My phone's running out of battery. This is my phone. I have a Samsung now. I used to have an iPhone, but I just, you know what, I was sold on this because of the size of it. Look at this phone is the size of my face. <sighs> I will never watch porn on the iPhone again. On the underside of every genuine Zippo there is a letter and a number. Uh, this is D11, which means it was manufactured in April, January, February, March, April, ABC, D, yes, April of 2011. So, if you have a Zippo, or if you're buying a Zippo, just out of interest, look at the letter and the number underneath, because that'll tell you when it was made. I'm a font of knowledge. What can I say? I've got trivia that'll curl your toes. And that is the best kind of trivia. <sighs> ah, scotch. Everyone thinks I'm really weird because I enjoy drinking Johnny Walker with apple juice. Don't judge me straight away. Try it. It's actually really nice. I was at my cousin's wedding. Ooh, that's nice. I've got the burn going down my throat now because I had some of this. At my cousin's wedding, I was the MC because I'm one of the only people in my family who isn't deathly afraid of public speaking. And so as a little thank you to me, my cousin and her fiance put a bottle of Johnny behind the bar for me. But I didn't have a hangover the next day because I drank it exclusively with apple juice and, you know, it, it being loaded with sugar, I didn't, didn't get a hangover. Quixotic is one of my favourite words. I love the word quixotic as an adjective. To be quixotic is to be preoccupied with an unrealistically optimistic or chivalrous approach to life. To be impractically idealistic, I'm going to repeat that alliteration because it's delicious, impractically idealistic. Gorgeous. I, I would consider myself to be quixotic some of the time because, really? Shift gears, mate. The word itself, of course, is derived from the novel Don Quixote, and because of that, a lot of people think that the word is pronounced chaotic. But because the English language is nuts and has no rules, it's not pronounced chaotic. It's pronounced quixotic. There you go. A gorgeous example of the inconsistencies of the English language. The English language is actually the most difficult language to learn if you're not born into it, because it doesn't have structure like every other language on the planet does. French, for instance, is so rigid. Native speakers of English are actually in quite a privileged position for that reason. I have been filming now for 23 minutes. 
I find myself wondering how much of that is actually usable. I also find myself wondering how many of you are bored to tears by now. I would dare say a lot of you. I love Salman Rushdie. If you haven't read Salman Rushdie, run out and read him. Give him a go. You'll love him. Well, you might not love all of his stuff because a lot of his stuff is very heavy and quite controversial. And actually, that's something that Susan said to me on the phone. Today? Or yesterday? I don't know, because my sleeping pattern's all off, but I don't mind controversy, whereas Susan would prefer to avoid it. So, if something is controversial, I'm more likely to like it. I'm not actually putting on Victoria's accent for this video an awful lot, am I? I'm using my real voice. I don't know why I started using a British accent, or, you know, a, a pretend British accent. I'm sure that real British people listen to me when I'm doing Victoria's accent and think, oh, could you not? But, I don't know, I sort of slip in and out of it now, whenever I'm recording. I'm sort of stuck doing it. I can't bring myself to just stop and use my normal, this normal voice when I'm recording, because it... because I'm stuck doing it. I can do anything to keep myself amused, and I think that comes from... When I was very little, I didn't have a lot of friends at school, in primary school that is, so I was quite a lot of the time just left to my own devices. So I would, you know, let my imagination be my circle of friends for a while and I'd run off and just think of stupid things and climb trees and play in the sand, whatever there was to do. So I can, yeah, if I've got an hour with nothing to do, I'll just invent something to do and I'll have a ball doing it. I'm funny like that. I'm very, very easy to keep amused. I don't get bored very often because I can, you know, I can stare at a wall. Do you know what might be interesting? If I ever do a video like this again where I just sit in front of the camera and talk, give me some topics. You know, give me give me something to, to talk about. Let's let's get some interactivity going. Just leave me something. Just something in quotation marks for for me to ramble on about. And I'll see if I can ramble on about it. That'd take the channel in a really interesting direction, wouldn't it? I think this is me signing off. I've I've officially run out of things that I can think of to talk about, so thank you very much for watching all of you. And I'll see you next time. Very possibly with something a little more thought out and constructed. But then again, I, you know, I make no promises.